Hij is voor het eerst in Nederland en ik mocht hem interviewen. Elon Musk, de medeoprichter van PayPal, ruimtevaartbedrijf SpaceX en natuurlijk Tesla. I came to sort of uh, meet, meet with the Tesla team here and, uh, and see customers. Uh, I always like to hear feedback and ideas and thoughts and comments uh, from customers. Um, and uh, you know, figure out where we need to do better and how we can you know, make the car uh, better and you know, that sort of thing. And what are they saying for you? What, well, what must improve on this car? <laughs> well, I mean, I just arrived, so I, I, I'm going to talk to like, um, our customers uh, in, a, in a moment. Okay. Um, but normally, what, what, are the, uh, what are the things they tell you? Well, it, you know, it, it, it varies from location to location. Um, and uh, I mean, generally, the people are pretty happy with the cars mm -hmm. um, and they're, pretty, they're really enthusiastic. Um, so I, you know, want to make sure that any, any, any small details that we can take care of. I mean, we want to be perfectionists and uh, and really make the car super good. Okay, you take so notes. I, I don't take notes, but I've you know I can remember pretty much what people say. Okay. So uh, yeah, but generally the response has been pretty good. There, I know there's a, a, a few charging issues, and we want to iron those out. And I think those those are mostly taken care of, but we still have a few things we want to address. Um, but generally the response I've gotten is that people are very excited and happy with the, the cars. Okay, a 1200, they sold in the Netherlands, 1200. And uh, it's a very popular car because it's beautiful, because it's electric and it can go very far. But it's also popular because of the tax benefits. Right. Do you think that helps Tesla? Yeah, I think the tax benefits uh, uh, definitely help make the car more, more affordable. And, um, and I think the tax benefits, I mean, the main the reason for the tax benefits is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's to serve as a catalyst to have it occur sooner than it would otherwise happen. Um, and so I think, uh, I think that the you know, tax benefits are, are a good thing. Obviously, they're not going to last forever. Yeah. Would, would Tesla Motors be an, another company without those tax benefits? Would, it, would there be other sales numbers, you think? Well, it's difficult but, to predict exactly what they'd be, but I think it's fair to say that um, the, uh, the, this, this, things would certainly be a lot slower. Um, so I think the tax benefits are doing their, what they're intended to do, which mm -hmm. is to accelerate the advent of sustainable, clean transport. Um, and uh, you know, you know, like, like I said, otherwise we'd be moving a lot slower. Um, and it's very important to the world that uh, we move to, to sustainable, clean energy, you know, both consumption and uh, production. Okay, yeah, this is the Model S. Yeah. It makes Tesla usually <laughs> popular with, with regular guys as well, except from Roadster. There's a Model X coming next yeah. year. And in three years, there will be a cheaper one. Tell me about that. That uh, will be a smaller car, it'll be 20% smaller, about half the price, not as many features. So if you think of like the Model S as similar to an Audi A7, A8 mm -hmm. type of thing, then the uh, our third generation car would be more like a, a Audi A4. A4, right. Okay. Yeah. But still not for a very large public, because it's still an expensive car. Yeah, we're, we're talking about, um, in, in, in dollar terms, about thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars for the car, um, and that would be. Um, but when you consider that relative to a gasoline car, because you save a lot more on gasoline, yep. uh, it's more like a, a twenty-five thousand dollar gasoline car. Um, so that's that's what we're planning. But that's about three years out. But you think the average Joe will buy that car already, or must it wait for another generation of Teslas? I, I think that. Yeah, the, the sweet spot in the market generally is around the mid twenties in, in US dollar terms. So it's maybe you know, if it's, if it's equivalent to buying a gasoline car twenty five thousand dollars, it's it's the mainstream of the market. Yeah. Um, but there's probably still uh, another level to go to uh, make it affordable to all. All right. Um, but I mean, our goal our goal is to try to make mass market affordable cars. Mm -hmm. it has, that's been our goal from the beginning. So a lot of people wonder, well. You know, why doesn't Tesla just, Tesla just make uh, a mass market, yeah. uh, long range electric car right now? And, and the issue is that it takes time to refine the technology. Uh, it takes time to scale up production. So you need economies of scale. You need uh, a, des a major design iteration. Um, and, the, and, and also the t third generation car will be 20% smaller. smaller yeah. So that's, that's essentially how we get to a 50% price reduction. 20% size decrease, uh, factor of 10 production increase and another design iteration to design for manufacturing. And that takes time, obviously. It does, it does but um, uh, I think you know, anyone who, who buys the Model S can, can take comfort, and I think something that's very important, which is they're helping pay for the mass market car. Mm -hmm. So if all the money we get from the Model S and the X, we, we pour into development of the third generation car. Um, and I think you, don't, that's, you don't make a dime of it. 
Well, for, for, we don't issue dividends no, no. Uh, or have you know uh, big bonuses or anything. Uh, my salary is one dollar a year. Yeah. I mean, but uh, our goal from the beginning has been to make an, a compelling mass market car because that's what's needed f for the world. Yeah. Um, but, but you keep comparing this car, the Tesla, yeah. with Audis and everything. Will, will it be comparable it with the Nissan eventually as well? Well, or I don't know about Nissan. No, <laughs> okay. That that's probably, I wouldn't, I'd, I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't aim, that's not, not a target I'd aim for. Um, no. But, but the, uh, I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is that if you, if you do buy, let's say you buy sort of a Porsche or a, a, you know, a, a, for a Ferrari or something like that, you, you're not helping, you know, Ferrari's not going to take the money they make and then ultimately make mass market cars. They're not going to help change the world in a positive way. What we're trying to do is change the world in a positive way. So um, I think, you know, if somebody buys this car, they can feel like, okay, they made a small difference. It almost it, feels it like charity you're doing. It's, <laughs> I would say it's, it's not like really charity, good. but it's, there's a greater good. Yeah. All right. So we get into the car. Yeah, sure. This car is now like 18 months old, a bit older, I think, uh, the model. Um, this Since the mass production started. Yeah, well, we, we only started production, yeah, 18, about 18 months ago. But the way the production works is it starts off very slowly mm -hmm. and then it ramps up exponentially. So, um, and, and we've made a number of, of small improvements since the start of production. Yeah, so. And yeah. the software keeps updating as well. Okay, because uh, this was uh, a year and a half ago you started. What is the one thing you would change with the next Model S? You know already, I'm <laughs> going, to, going to change that. Well, I, it's difficult for me to, to comment on that, okay. um, but um, I, we, there are a number of things that, uh, you know, as, as we come out with an improvement, we just roll it into production. So mm -hmm. unlike uh, um, other car makers where they have these like annual model year things, um, as we make improvements, we just roll that into production. So for example, parking sensors or folding mirrors, um, things like that, n new interior options. They just, as soon as, they're, as soon as we're done with the engineering and design, we make it available on the website. Okay. So the car that one buys today actually has a lot more options, a lot more capabilities than the car of 18 months ago. Okay, so you're, you're, you're evolving in, in, instead it's of revolutionary uh, exactly. every, every it, it's time a model. Like, the, the car is under, sort of, uh, under constant uh, evolution. Yeah. Okay, um, this, this car is not self-driving. There are companies <laughs> making right. cars that are self-driving. When will sure. the first Tesla be there that drives itself, you think? Well, um, is, is, it, is, the, is yeah. it the goal to make a self-driving Tesla? We, we do want to have uh, what we call an autopilot capability. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that we're approaching it is active safety in the limit. So we just keep adding sort of active safety features um, and eventually you'd get to a self-driving, auto, you know, fully automatic car. Um, but I, I think that's... Um, I think for it to be a true autopilot is probably a long time away because mm -hmm. you have to eliminate these corner cases. So, because you have to say, well, how reliable does a car have to be if it's running on the computer? Probably 99.9999, yeah. like six nines. You don't want any accidents with it. No. Yeah, exactly. So th th what people are very good at doing is responding to unexpected situations. Uh, computers are not good at doing that. So the it, it'll be a long time before you could sort of get in a car, fall asleep, and then arrive at your destination. Um, but I think w w one can get do a lot before that, just like with an aircraft where you have an autopilot system, yep. but you still have a pilot. Um, I think that's how it'll be for, I don't know, at least an another 10 years. Okay. This car is very smart. It's almost a computer, they say, yeah, the iPhone on wheels, I hear, uh, I hear a lot. Yeah. Um, you also collect a lot of data with, with the cars. What do you do with the data you collect from your customers? Um, well, we don't... Uh, we don't store any speed or position data. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the data they collect is really uh, analytical data. So it's sort of like, uh, let's say, uh, if the car is detecting that maybe the motor is wearing out or mm -hmm. the, the, the battery may need some work or something like that, then the car will report that there's a potential service challenge or, or, so, or something needs to be serviced. Mm -hmm. And the goal of that is to do preemptive servicing. So we want to... Um, service apart before it breaks and rather than have a customer experience it. Okay, how, how many times does that happen with a regular Tesla user that he, that, he, that you get a sign from, hey, this car might break yeah, down? Yeah, it happens quite a lot. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, for example, we have a small auxiliary battery mm -hmm. and sometimes that, uh, we had a supplier issue where some of the, the small auxiliary batteries were um, 
nearing the end of life sooner than expected. So rather than wait for that small auxiliary battery to fail, um, the, the car will report uh, to, to the service center that it needs to be replaced. Have you got a message on the display? Uh, it, yeah, it'll, it'll, in some cases a message, in some cases it, it'll, it'll alert service and then we'll call the customer okay. and say, uh, we think we should probably f fix this thing on your car. All right. Um, but that's the only data that we store is basically, you know, vehicle diagnostic stuff. And the rest of privacy issues, yeah, you there's say no, we don't have that. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we've set it up so that yeah. even if there's a court order, yeah. we don't, we, we can't say, oh, where was this person on this date? We don't know. You don't know. All <laughs> so. right. The car is getting smarter and smarter, but the highways are still dumb and the roads. Yeah. Uh, do you have a plan for that <laughs> as well to make them a bit smarter <laughs> as well? I, I think fixing the roads is that's a that's a really difficult problem. It's not something, I mean, uh, I mean here in Netherlands, look, the roads are excellent. I, I should say, I and mean, they may be dumb, but they look great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're and still dumb, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty dumb. Um, I wish we had roads this good in in Los Angeles. Our roads are terrible there, <laughs> which is crazy for a car town. Um, but. Uh, do you have ideas about it? how to make the road smarter and, and connect with the car? Maybe, maybe I, I don't know. I, I think we're okay. I think I think it's a, I think we it's probably going to be going to work out fine to have the car be to increase the intelligence of the car. Um, and I mean, for roads, I was trying to think like what maybe have a a better signaling mechanism between cars and say stoplights. Yeah. Like tra sometimes traffic lights, and you can be sitting in a traffic light. Induction. There's no, yeah, there is induction, but yeah. some, sometimes that's not as <laughs> you know, you still have to wait. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, the induction definitely helps. Uh, but you don't like you never want to be sitting in a traffic light and it's uh, it's red and but the other direction is green when there's no cars. Yes. You know that's pretty annoying. That happens. That's one thing you want to. Yeah, I think that would be a cool <laughs> thing to make better. Okay. Sure. And, and also like networked intelligence to have the cars be able to communicate with each other for traffic information and that kind of thing. It's more like the autopilot products as well, isn't it? The, it all involves that. Yeah, I think if, if we can take uh, there's, there's this whole sort of notion of crowdsourcing or, or networked intelligence between the fleet. So I think it'd be a cool thing for the cars to be able to share traffic data, like so you get uh, more accurate traffic speeds and that kind of thing, um, and uh, and be able to improve the navigation to take that into account. Okay, um, how much of your time do you still spend on Tesla? It's about half my time. Half your time is Tesla. Yeah. And the rest is the is, uh, are the other projects you have, or projects, companies, you have SpaceX, uh, for example. Yeah. Does technology from SpaceX come into Tesla cars? Is there is there an overlap? Yeah. Does it help each other? Yeah. So, uh, with with uh, in, in the rocket business, we're used to dealing with uh, very lightweight materials. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, you know uh, advanced aluminium, um, advanced joining techniques, um, uh, new types of welding and bonding and that kind of thing and. That uh, we employed that also in the Model S. So we can, can show me rocket one technology. Thing or no? Well, it's a rocket it's technology in the car or outside the car. Well, essentially, know? it's the the body and chassis mm -hmm. is all aluminium, yeah. um, which is rare. Most cars are steel, or maybe they've got a little bit of aluminium. But uh, in the Model S, it's all um, the whole body and chassis is, is aluminium. And Let's go outside. I want to show you one okay. thing. I wanted to say uh, talk to you about the wheels because the sure. wheels are literally thousands of years old. Isn't it time to replace the wheels with something else? You mean like a hover car or something? I don't know. <laughs> you come up with like your ideas. I don't know. Space well, you got to roll somehow. It's either you roll or you're f either you're flying or you're rolling. So, um, you know, that's uh, maybe there will be flying cars one day. Yeah, you hope so. I, th I think they probably will. Thank you very much for right. this interview. Thank you.